how are you all doing you're yeah, welcome to my youtube channel in this video i'm trying as much as possible not to laugh even though i want to laugh but it's so heavy in my mind and i thought to to bring this gist call it gist call it rant whatever you want to call it to come and discuss it here and let's learn one or two things this world is becoming something else so if you are a nigerian you know this and if you are not a nigerian let me brief you about what i want to talk about in nigeria the eastern part of nigeria we have something we call apprenticeship apprenticeship in the eastern it's dominant in the eastern part of nigeria and the whole essence of the apprenticeship is that a younger boy it could be a teenager it could be a lad it could be any age will be taken from his or her parents to go and serve a master so they call who they are serving the master and the person serving is like a servant or like a boy or like anything this is something that is peculiar with the eastern part of nigeria and when we say eastern part of nigeria that's the Igbo speaking part of nigeria and this practice is a good one because the practice really helps it helps to cover up social segregation it helps to alleviate poverty because most people that go out to serve their bosses they go to serve because their parent couldn't send them to school so a boss in lagos take, takes a, a child or a young boy from the east brings the boy to lagos and then the boy serves it, it could be three years it could be seven years the boy will serve and when we say serving that means the the boss probably must have a business it could be electronics it could be carpentry it could be anything but this young boy will have to serve the master for three or seven years and after the service the master is meant to settle the boy and once the master settles the boy the boy can stand on his own most of them come in as a young boy and before they leave they become man they can stand on their own and they also can help another young boy to go like that like that this is peculiar to the eastern part of nigeria and i personally i think it's a good thing because it has really helped to cover a lot of social segregation imagine bringing a boy from the village the boy comes to lagos or any popular city and the person gets better so it's a way of helping people to rise which is good it's been on for ages even before i was born and it's still on but something also is peculiar sometimes when this young lad or this younger people serve their bosses some bosses are greedy and they will not want to settle the young ones they will look for something to say not to settle the the younger the the, the lad that have served them for seven years which i don't think is funny some people have even served their master for seven years and they were not get they were not settled but that's even a story for another day so there's this story that is going on in social media and i thought to bring it to my space so that we can pick one or two lessons and i'm also ranting because i'm angry about it there is a man he lives in lagos he has a big shop in um he has a big shop in lagos in um, trade fair so he took a boy from the village and this boy he took was not just any random boy he was a boy that had stayed with the father the boy's name is chine doom he took he took the boy to lagos and he decided that the boy should serve him i think they had an agreement the boy this chine Doom boy is the only son of the parents is the only son of the parents and the parents were obviously poor because for their son to live with a father then the the father is sending to live with the master's father that shows that they probably don't really have anything they are living for all their hope was on the on the boy so this chine Doom went to lagos was serving the master and the master said he trusted chine Doom. now this is the story from the mother's side from chine Doom. She, um, the, from the from the master the master said chinedu was stealing his money he was stealing goods from his warehouse and when he got to know he got to realize that the boy has stolen goods up to 30 million i mean how can somebody steal goods up to 30 million from your shop that's what he said but chinedu on the other side said that he, did, he wasn't stealing he wasn't taking anything now i'm not taking brief for the younger boy because you know when t teenagers they can do and undo it could be that chinedu was actually stealing the boss money 
it could be. But the way the boss took it was far. So when the boss realized that the money the guy was stealing was too much, the guy involved some some hooligans in Lagos that they should beat up Chinedu because he was telling Chinedu to go and bring the money and Chinedu was saying he didn't take the money but the boss said he kept saying that money was missing they try when he realized that it was about 30 million he was angry he was furious and you know a businessman when he's angry and he's furious he can do and undo so he probably caused some guys to beat up chinedu they tied chinedu up they beat him and they even injured one of his eyes so when he tied chinedu on chinedu was always crying nobody could help so chinedu escaped he escaped one night out of the compound through the through the roof and he went to stay with some guys that helped him to buy drugs and they gave him money and he traveled to the village to meet the mom so when he got to the village the mom said why did you come what happened but the mom was trying to hug the boy but the boy was in pain and the boy said explain everything to the mother and then he sent for chinedu's boss he refused to come to the village they kept saying he should come they should set to the so it was a lot money was missing obviously yes Money was missing, and the boss also said that Chinedu was using spell on him. That's what some of the masters will always say, that Chinedu was using spell on him, so he didn't know what he was doing until he got to see the spell in the house that his eye cleared and realized that Chinedu was still in his mind. So, anyway, they tried to beg the boss. The boss was refusing that Chinedu must provide the money. So, eventually, Chinedu's boss sent for chinedu to come back even though the boy was in pain and the boy had almost a blind left eye the boy said the boy must the, the boss was saying the boy must come back the boy must come back and of course the boy went back to lagos when he got to lagos the boss invo involved police officers they arrested the boy chinedu's father still came back to lagos and was begging the boss but the boss was refusing the boss's father was even begging the boss the boss was refusing that chinedu must provide him money chinedu must provide him money but the truth is it's possible that chinedu stole the money and everything but for me i just feel that the highest you could have done is to send chinedu away or the, the long and short story now was that Chinedu eventually died in the prison. The, the police officers are saying Chinedu killed himself in the prison. Meanwhile, um, he killed himself because the pains was, were too much for him to bear. Now, the problem now is that Chinedu's father is saying that Chinedu's boss must bring Chinedu's body to the village. And that Chinedu's boss, whose name is Fidelis, said instead of Chinedu to be released from the prison and not provide his money, Chinedu will pay with his life. That's a lesson. When we are angry, we need to be careful what we are saying. So even now, maybe Chinedu actually killed himself. Chinedu's father is holding that confession against the boss that he said instead of Chinedu to go scot free, Chinedu will pay with his life. So, and when I read the story, it was a lot from the mother's side, from the, it was a lot. And I thought to just bring it here to share, to throw some highlight that in this life, eh, issues will come. Money issue, especially, we just need to be careful as a people. So the lessons from this, from this old gist that I decided to bring and throw more light on is that one, when you are angry, be careful what you're saying. Be very, very careful what you're saying when you're angry. That's number one. And number two, money is not everything. People will dupe you. People will scam you. Your brothers, your family. People will, people will do all sorts when it comes to money. But just know that money is not everything. Money is not everything. In Nigeria as a country, we value money more than life. It shouldn't be. Money is not everything. Number three, when people beg you, like when something happens, even though it involves money, so long it doesn't involve your life. When people plead with you and beg you to forgive, to let go, even though you don't understand, don't always try to make a point. Don't always say over your dead body. When people beg you, even though you are right or you are wrong, just accept and let it go. Forgive them. It's not easy, but let it go. So far, it's not about your life. So let it go. Number four is that when there is life, there is hope. 
So when people dupe you, like most of you know my story here. Yeah? If you've not watched, maybe you could check my two videos away. A girl called Kachi in Nigeria duped me and a lot of women. I was angry, I was pissed, I spoke about it. A lot of people told me to drop the case, even though I've not dropped it, I'm prayerfully dealing with it. But I just decided to stop talking about it you understand so when people talk to you when people genuinely beg you about something even if you don't understand and just let it go because when there is life there is when there is life there is hope there is hope that you can make more money but if you kill somebody you can't create a life another lesson is that um let people cheat you it's even better for people to cheat you than you cheating people it's better let them cheat you let it be that they are owing you so that when you are praying and you are telling God, God is listening and you are saying, God, you see this person, this person is owing me, this person is owing me. Let people owe you. And finally, allow God to be the judge. We can't always fight our battle by ourselves. We can't always win all the battles. When you fight some battles and you are not winning, just let it go. Now, the story is all over social media. What was supposed to be good has now turned to evil. Chinedu's boss was trying to help Chinedu's family to alleviate poverty, which was a custom in the eastern region, the apprenticeship thing. But now, Chinedu is dead. Chinedu's mother is childless. Chinedu is the only child of the mother. The father now is saying that Chinedu's boss have to bring, give him his son back. So it's all over, but it all boils down to money. So my people, before I leave you today, I want you to consider this point. Don't let money rule you. Money is good, but don't forget that it's also the root of it. So when people cheat you sometimes, rant about it, say whatever you want to say, but learn to let things go. So I just saw this news and it's been heavy in my it's been heavy in my heart since morning I, I was sad about it because a mother had to lost a child and now the, in, food, in fact the boss the boss also some guys in the area were angry because this young apprentice you always also have like a community of young apprenticeship like they went to the boss's house to they went to his shop to loot his shop to burn down the shop so at the end of the day money that you are trying to protect everything is now going down the drain so my people even as we journey into the into the into the into the year the year is still fresh today is the last day of um today is 31st the last day of the first quarter don't let money ruin you if there's anything you are doing and you are considering money too much you need to have a rethink enjoy life live life live life when there is life there is hope so that's how I leave. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do help a sister to go. I love you all. Till I see you in my next video. Bye-bye.